Greetings, greetings, everyone. Welcome back to A Passionate Eclectic and a Retired Liar. Hashtag A Pearl and all your social media platforms. We are back for episode five. Yeah, episode five, Cinco de Mayo, but it's not Mayo, it's October. So, you know, episode five, recording live. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe we made it to episode five. Yeah, honestly, I thought you'd have kicked me off by now talking about all that ass eating I'd be doing. Shit. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, uh, you know, I don't judge. I don't judge. So that's why I'm here. Hey, <laughs> y'all. Y'all, I just want y'all to know that girl Mika really always be matching with her glasses and her shit. She got the red lipstick with the red frames on today. Look at her. Okay, then. With the kinky curls out. Yes, ma'am. Black on, well, black on. They, they black also on. match my pants. And her pants match. Look at that. Black on, black on, black on chocolate on red. You hear me? So, you got to see it. Yeah. No, I, I am I got not. my Halloween costume yesterday. I'm so excited. What are you going to dress up as? I'm going to be a witch. A witch? Mm-hmm. You know, I've called you a witch a few times. I don't know if you caught it before. No. And anytime you start talking about that moon shit, I be saying, no. I ain't into that witch shit. <laughs> Leave me so, and my you know, astrology alone. Yeah, it fits you. Go ahead, Miss Witchy. So last year, I, ha- I was Storm. And I had a purple hood, uh, hooded cape. So this year I'm just taking the purple hooded cape and I got a dress and I'm be a witch. So. Wait, a purple hooded cape? You mean mm-hmm. Raven from Teen Titans? No, I was a purple, purple storm. If you want to see it, head to my um, TikTok or my Instagram page and go to, I'll try to share it uh, in, uh, the, on Monday. So that you guys can see it, uh, a throwback when this comes out. So um, you'll see what I did last year. I was a purple version of Storm for Halloween. (laughs) I want you to know purple is my least favorite color on the block. So you turning Storm into Barney kills me. You don't see that our background and everything is purple because it's (laughs) you just changed the background blue. What you doing? It's purple. You and your color business. No, 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 no. Everything just disappeared. It is blue now. Just it's blue. not blue. It's purple. Am I colorblind? You are. Colorblind. <laughs> I'm not colorblind. That shit blue. If y'all watching, bro, tell me what the background say at three minutes in. Um, I'm pretty sure that shit is blue. And on the right side, it may be slightly hues of purple, but most of the shit is blue. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Thank you for coming to A Pearl. Yeah. And you're wearing, uh, Mr. Squidward, a purple. A purple hooded cape. Yes, I know. That shit's so ironic. (laughs) Look, I didn't say I uh, love it. (laughs) No, no, no. I don't hate the color purple. I just not, I'm not a fan. Now, you see where it says Sir Glee and Mika over here with the little name? That little fuchsia, little light color purple right there. Not not the movie, but that light color purple. I could dig it. I could get jiggy with that color right there. But them other Barney looking color purples or royal purple, that shit. <laughs> Boo, tomato, tomato, tomato. I'm throwing tomatoes. I like any color purple. So I like, I have two Telfar bags and I need I need to get one more but I have it in eggplant I have it in, in the lavender and I need to get the grape I love purple moving on to better and <laughs> better topics <laughs> aside from that color purple topic might I add I've never actually seen the movie color purple I've only ever seen the Broadway play Oh, so you see the Broadway play? Well, the Broadway play is not bad. It, it it had music in it, right? Yeah. The version you saw? Okay. 
Uh, so, I mean, it's basically the same thing. It just, there's no music. Well, it's like a couple songs, but not like, it's not heavy duty music. Yeah, we only watched it because um, I was in theater as a JIT. Maybe only for the eighth grade, though, I was in theater. <laughs> and um, they wouldn't allow us to watch it in school. So the only thing that our teacher could do, because she was like, this is such a good play, and this is part of your culture. You guys need to watch it and know. She was a, a older older white lady, Miss Wolf, with an E at the end. I'll never forget yeah. you, Miss Wolf. It was a real one for real. She let she she had the performing arts for the for the niggas. Oh, yeah. You feel me? For niggas. She catered to our niggerly, niggardly needs. So I fuck with her. Shout out Miss Wolf. But yeah, yeah, she put us on after school. So we watched that whole color purple Broadway show. That shit was oh, wow. Since you grew up in Florida, did they make you watch R- Rosewood? No. But I did not have all of my schooling in Florida. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, yeah. I, I watched it, but... Um, I don't even know what Rosewood is. I'm not going to hold you. Yeah, no. Um, I mean, Rosewood is uh, based on a historical facts, so uh, it's not a fun movie. Actually, uh, <laughs> I watched it in college, in a college that was predominantly white, and we were uh, at a summer program, and it was mostly uh, black people in the program, and we came out of that building after watching that movie very, very angry. <laughs> oh, Niggas was upset. Niggas was marching. Freedom yeah. march on the spot. Yeah, we it wasn't it wasn't pretty. So I was like. Um, that's why I wanted to know if, the, if y'all had the same reaction because we were just like, why would they show us this? <laughs> just makes you angry. <laughs> nah, I, I don't like um, I don't like being angry for no reason. So oh, there I was would... reasons. There's lots. Yeah, of I'm sure there's reasons, but like them repercussions that I'm seeking, I can't motherfucking. <laughs> Yeah, you can't do that I can't act upon it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so man. we just gotta take it to the chin. So I don't even be watching nothing black trauma because we just gotta take that shit to the chin, and I'm yeah. tired of it. Honestly, I'm tired. Yeah, it's really hard for me to to sing. It's really hard for me to do it. Um, if you, I mean, a lot of times it's worth it. Like we have the new Till movie about to come on, and if you can watch it, it, it's necessary facts that we need to know, especially as a people. But just the like the anger, and especially like since now, like even nowadays, it just doesn't feel like much has changed. It's it's just weird. But um, Rosewood was a historical drama about the Rosewood massacre of 1923, where a white mob killed black people and destroyed their predominantly black town um it, and it all stemmed from kind of the same thing as it what happened with Emmett Till uh kind white of sounds like the Oklahoma massacre too yes but this one um so this one a white woman accused um because she was having an affair she accused a uh, black man of being the person, and they literally burnt the whole town down. Um, whereas with Tulsa, Oklahoma, that they literally burnt that town down because it was thriving and predominantly and Negroes, black. And Negroes had their own black Wall Street in Tulsa, and they said, no, Wall Street or niggers. And yeah. they kicked us out. They kicked us out. And yeah. I said, damn, my heart hurt. That's why I stepped foot in Oklahoma maybe only two times in my life. After the second time, I said, never again. That shit was picky. Not hickey like you sucking on somebody's neck, you feel mm-hmm. me? But hickey like, I just see my sister and she look good. That type of hickey. Hicks. Yeah, I was not yeah. feeling it. Dutty too, dutty, dutty man. 
And, and it's so funny. I was just reading an article. I think it was today or yesterday. It was like uh, the the states with uh, the home, the most affordable housing, and it was like Detroit, Michigan, um, Tulsa, Oklahoma, and um, two other places that was like, yeah, no, <laughs> like mostly fairly um, states and cities that are still uh, impoverished and or and or have a lot of racism. So you said uh, you kind of bleeped and cut out the you said and or something some 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 racism and and or has a lot of racism. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, I used to talk, well, actually, I ain't talked to this, this person, but she was like a, a friend mm-hmm. of, um, a friend and he was like talking to her, but like I exchanged conversation with her a few times. And, um, when I had exchanged conversation with this Caucasian lady from Oki town, mm-hmm. she was, um, uh, she was like, Ooh. I just burped. Ooh, it's that. Because I have to sit here and edit out your burping. Is hilarious. Oh my gosh, no, <laughs> no, keep that part. Keep that part. But um, <laughs> where was I? Yeah. So she was talking, or like she was talking with my homeboy type shit. Cause he down with the swirl. I don't know. He a little weird ass nigga. But I digress. You like what you like, I guess. Anyways, um. He was. I talked to her for a little. And she she was telling me, like she used to fist fight her dad all the time because um he hated that she dated black boys and like he would like he hated it so much where they would actually be fist fighting. Like he got arrested maybe like three times from them fist fighting because he can't tolerate her dating black boys. Wow. Yeah. So I was like, damn, bitch, you're going to get one of these niggas hanged. <laughs> yeah. I'm playing, playing with niggas, bro. Just stick to your own. Bro. <laughs> nah. But that shit, that shit's a little eye-opening because... She was only really doing it though, just to get back at her dad too. Like she, she liked niggas, of course, but it's it was more so on a fetish level oh. instead of like liking them. Cause she would always talk about how cute their mixed babies would be. Ah, uh, that's a red flag. Yeah. <laughs> you would have red some flag. cute mixed babies. No. 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 Cute mixed babies. Oh like I have no problem with people dating other races. Date who you want. Love who you want. It's great. Mm-hmm. I love love. I love watching love. I don't care who's in love. I love watching it. That being said, I don't like fetishization. Yeah. And, and that's like a big a uh, big thing up. for me. Ugh. No. Fetishes is fellow. <laughs> Yeah, that word. Satisfaction. And, <laughs> and it's actually so much so that I really, ref, not refuse, but it, it, I find it very hard to think about dating outside of my race because I really worry about being fetishized. Mm-hmm. I have dated outside of my race. And I've only actually been fetishized once Um when I was dating outside of my race, but thankfully it was just the one time. Um, and like all the other times was just genuine, but there was, um, I th- think she was Pakistani girl that I was um, talking to. And I know her, mm-hmm. her dad did not like niggas. Is I like, um, you could date or do whatever like you want with, with them. But you cannot marry a black man, like a nigga. Mm-hmm. Like, that's what he would always tell her. And I was like, well, shorty, I ain't even looking to marry you for real. Like, so <laughs> good on that. 
But yeah, that's how that was. You know, everybody hate niggas. Niggas hate niggas. I know I hate niggas. Can't stand you niggas. But I love niggas at the same time, bro. I love it. I love being a nigga. I hate ignorant niggas, but I love them too because they be ignorantly funny. Like um, like uh, who who they uh, Carisha? She ignorantly funny. Actually, let me not say that because Carisha gonna fucking shut down this podcast and be like, no, she got more money. Let me not <laughs> bark up that tree. I I love you, Carisha. Carisha, please. Anyways. Um <laughs> I I just be round. Oops. <laughs> this is why we get yelled at that our podcast is two hours because we're always going on. We haven't even begun the pod. Oh, <laughs> uh, we have begun the pod. We gotta warm them up into the conversation. We talking with you and to you. Oh me? my god. So uh so we start as always general news and gossip um oh i'm gonna start off with the bad news the very sad news um we lost leslie jordan this week rest in peace leslie jordan whoever you are so let leslie i'm sure you actually know who leslie jordan is he is the little old man who did like TikTok. Oh, the twirl, daddy twirl, nigga. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that little old man. Oh. Yeah, he, um, you know, an absolute gay icon, comedian, actor, writer, singer. He had been in the business forever. Um, and during the pandemic, he did all these videos that people just absolutely loved. Um, I never knew, um, like who he was. Like I've always ever just seen his like King. Ooh, excuse me. Burped inside my chest. I've always seen his little kinky videos that he be doing like for his little weird kinks that he got going on like the little 12 daddy 12 or ooh. <laughs> you know that one too <laughs> but like he was so funny it's just like it was, that's the crazy funny. thing is like he was so outlandish but it was so like just cute and funny and oh he is going to be missed he had the absolute best sense of humor. He made people just smile. Mm -hmm. Um, he died this week in a car crash on the way to. <gasps> his it was a car crash. Uh, call me Kate. Yes, it was a car crash. How um, unfortunate. Um, he was. Uh, I think he was six. He was in Will and Grace. Yes, he was in Will and Grace. Will and Grace was fire. Actually, I can't say it was fire. I don't know if you ever seen maybe like four or five episodes of that shit at like 2 a.m. when I was supposed to be sleeping, <laughs> but I was not sleeping. <laughs> and uh, he was in Will and Grace. He was in, let's see, what else he was in? But, I, you know, we know him for that. House. He was in Friday the 13th. Oh, yeah, he was in a lot of things. Um. So yes, he, he died in a car crash. He actually had just uh, at age the age that he was recently bought his first home in California. So uh, just uh he will be missed. He so will sad. But that that nigga was short though. You were four eleven. Yeah. <laughs> I would not want to stand next to him. I, I I'm, I'm oh, you slightly scared. You a tower, tower over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm slightly short. People slightly make me uncomfortable. If you in the four range, like you start oh, with a I was four. Gonna say, what are you trying <laughs> to say? No, no. If you start with a four, that's where we have some problems now. <laughs> we can't be friends. Like I'm too tall. What are we gonna do? Hang out. <laughs> I'm going, I'm going to hold your hand and take you to a, like a Ferris wheel. Like, <laughs> are you my daughter or son? Like, no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> oh, my God. 
as a grown ass adult, why are you for anything? But you know, some people can't help it. I guess. I don't even remember the. Literally last cannot help it. Mm-hmm. Literally cannot. Help it. Mika, don't tell me you're actually for something. I am not for something. I'm okay, thankfully over five feet. Yeah, not by much. But. <laughs> Look, you you reached the threshold, okay? You reached the threshold. <laughs> you, and I li- and I literally mostly date men over six feet, so there's that. Um, what? How do their backs feel? Do you ever feel remorse for these niggas' is back? No, nope. uh, you evil, 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 evil woman. I love it. Uh, that's why you uh, gotta wear that witch outfit on Halloween. <laughs> that's funny. Um, yeah. <laughs> Um, that is too funny. What the general news you got for us? <laughs> so, uh, next month, the new Savage uh, Times Fenty um, show will be out on Amazon Prime. And it's starring, let's see, a few people will be in it. Uh, Damson Idris, uh, Marseille Martin. Cheryl Lee Ralph, Sim Liu, Taraji P. Henson, Taylor Page, Winston. Taraji P. in it? Yep. That's my baby. I love her. And um, it will be featured singers uh, Bunnaboy, Maxwell, and Anita, and Don Tolliver. So very fun and exciting if you have not. Watch the Savage Fenty um, shows. They are on Amazon Prime, so go watch them and catch up. And then watch the new one next month. I think it comes out uh, November 9th. Yes, November, November 9th. 9th. Yes. Oh, wait. Isn't motherfucking um, Wakanda Forever supposed to be coming out soon? Yes, Wakanda Forever. Actually, tonight, Um, so today is... Uh, Wednesday, October 26th. Tonight is actually the actual premiere in Hollywood, I believe. Um, so, actually, a lot of people are out there now going to that. Oh, yeah. shit. So, that shit dropping tonight? So, the premiere is tonight, and the movie will be out Octo- uh, no, so November um, 9th or 10th. Why am I not in a movie theater right now watching this shit? Because it doesn't come out till next month. Wait, because why would they can trick us like this? I'm so hurt. Because the premiere's always before the movie actually comes out. Why can't like other people experiment experience the premiere at the same time? It's a premiere. This should be worldwide premiere. You feel? No, me? because then it won't be like you know you can't have the red carpet and the exclusivity. <sighs> Celebrities are so bougie ghetto. I hate it. <laughs> Just let me watch the movie. I don't care about you. <laughs> I can't say I don't care about them because you know I fuck with them black folk. You feel me? What kind of forever? Yeah. I can't wait. I can't wait. Um, I'm actually going to LA to watch it, uh, a screening of it. So I'm excited. I will be. Oh, recording. you are going to be part of that premiere brunch. Yeah, yeah. So I'm actually going to be recording whatever I can, taking lots of pictures. You want to do me a favor? It. You want to help the hood? What's that? Help the hood. How? Set up a camcorder while you're watching that movie. I'm not. <laughs> what thing? We're going to sell that shit at the barber shop. You feel me? That is not what I will be recording. No, anyway. Pop all that shit on a blank CD. Blank CD, blank CD. We're kind of forever. A week before. Here we go. I, I'm Wait. trying to break into the business, not be a bootlegger. <laughs> Look, look, look. Oh, we could call it Wakanda forever with a U, so they don't they don't catch on to us. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they will. <laughs> it's Marvel. They will yeah. catch on. I'm sure they. You think they don't have that um already licensed too? The Wakanda forever? Hell no, they better not. <laughs> you don't think so? Hell no, they don't. What the hell? They're not thinking that far ahead. Uh, listen, or are they? I would not. I would not put it past them. To be honest. Uh, let's see. Oh, so People Choice Award nomination out today. 
Um, do you watch the People's Choice Awards? I don't give a fuck about them. Yeah, I'm pretty much the same, but let, let's get into a couple of these categories. Um, so, movie of 2022, Bullet Train. Have you ever heard that? I don't know. Um, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Good movie. Good movie. Good movie. Good movie. Elvis. I, I was expecting more. I'm not going to hold you. I was expecting a lot more when they mentioned that the spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. If you don't want to hear this, skip. All right. But yeah, I was expecting them to not, for them to expand more on the little X Men universe when they mm -hmm. fucking introduced them. But no, yes. they didn't. That shit hurted me, dog. I like, yo, this must be the. The rebranding of X Men into the Marvel Universe, because you know Marvel own X Men and shit. And no, they just killed all of them. I like, yo, you fucking kidding me? <laughs> well, I think I think it's going to be a phase. And and remember, we were talking about uh, Fantastic Four being like they're going to reboot it again. I think the the Fantastic Four is going to also lead into um into oh actually I'm wrong. Because they, I just did see that. Uh, I think did I mention it here that that Hugh Jackman had signed on to a new um, Wolverine role. So, yeah. Mm hmm. Hugh's back. Mm hmm. Oh my gosh. Mm hmm. You, you do it, nigga. God's work, Hugh. Listen. So we, we're getting something. I, it was just like a taste. Look, 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 I guess we're on the motherfucking movies and motherfucking whatever schedule early because we're going to talk about this. Look, when Hugh was a fucking on Logan, girl, let me tell you, I fucking cried, you feel me? I'm a nigga that don't even be crying like that. But I was like, yo, my nigga Wolverine, go What? Wolverine uh, can't die. So I wouldn't have Logan. That was the last X-Men movie to come out. Yeah, Logan. but he can't die. He died because he ran out of the fucking... Um, adamantium? The adamantium is what actually poisoned him and killed uh -huh. him in his system. So that's how he died canonically. Well, then this you is... Make... Logan? Girl, you better go watch that shit and go no. cry. That's no. one of the best movies I've ever watched. I really go back to that shit and rewatch it because it is just really one of my favorite movies all time. Logan. He so maybe it's a different uh, universe he'll be in. If he died in the universe, he might be. This might be a different universe. Because you know, a lot of the movies, uh, Marvel movies, are from Earth six one six. Yeah. Um, so they might jump into another universe for real. Honestly. Yeah. 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 Smart girl. Look at you. I know you my mom. Shit. You I know did. your shit, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, like I said, uh, nominated as well, Elvis, Jurassic World Domination, Nope. Elvis the movie or the actual person? Cause Elvis the act there. movie, Elvis, the, the one came out this, this They said year. he ain't wash his ass when he, after he done shit. <laughs> I don't know if that's true. Oh, but he, God, he Elvis looked like a dirty ass motherfucker. Crackers. He was a celebrity, so only God knows. Um. <laughs> Well, a lot of celebrities have been coming out, white ones in particular, coming out and saying they don't wash their legs or arms. So, yes. So that that is a thing. Ah, mm, they say the water will just get it. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I, I just... <laughs> we going um, Yes. <laughs> the Batman, uh, Thor, Love and Thunder, and Top Gun Maverick. So out of all those movies, which ones have you seen? I've seen Multiverse of Madness. I've seen the Batman, the one with um the vampire glitter boy. That one. I've seen that. Mm -hmm. And that's all I remember from what you said. Uh I've only seen Doctor Strange. So <laughs> that's the only movie I would vote for. That's that the only one that should stick out to me. But <laughs> yeah. I, would, I wouldn't vote for that um what's it called? that Batman movie. Not because mm -hmm. I hate Robert Patterson or because I didn't like the movie. Mm -hmm. 
I just really didn't think it was um up to par compared to the Marvel um Doctor Strange one. The Doctor Strange one was like jam packed with like action and aside from the action, you know, we actually grew attachment to the character of Doctor Stephen Strange. And it's like, yo, we kind of wanted to see what it was, what it would be with his wife and the you know, yeah. I was really invested in his personal story aside from his um superhero story and him finding himself. So I was really fucking with it. This new Batman movie, it was just, you know, something to watch when when you like want to watch some action shit. I don't know. It I don't know. It just didn't draw me close. Like yeah. I, I I find that's the case with most of those DC movies. DC movies, like I don't; these are characters that we love. We love the Batman, we mm-hmm. love them. but for some reason they have not done since the like. What's that Christian dude name again? Christian was Christian it? Video? Bale. Yes, that was. But when he had his Batman, and then we saw his whole training monologue when he was training in the mountains and shit, trying to get stronger and shit. That grew a personal like connection for me. Like Christian Bell, probably my favorite Batman for real, for real. Because like I don't know the way they wrote that and directed them movies, I was just really feeling that shit. I I liked. I mean, I like the older Batman. So I like the George Clooney, the Mike. <laughs> yeah, that George Clooney one with fucking Arnold Schwarzenegger as uh, Iceman. <laughs> that uh, shit was that, uh, Mr. Freeze. Yeah, like that's what I'm yeah, saying. Mr. Like, Freeze. Not you fucking correcting me, girl. What the fuck? You really know your shit. <laughs> Those I know. <laughs> this stuff I know. Because <laughs> I, I, I used to be a very big comic book fan. Um, so like Archie comics, all the like. What Archie. you read Archie? Oh, um, I I was that. Uh, whenever they would come, I would go and get the Archie comics. Like, so I was a big comic book fan. Um, and I was a big, you know, like Marvel head. Like I, I, I like this stuff. So I do know my stuff mostly. Sometimes I have to look it up if I don't remember. But that's a. Uh, but I'll sit there and like go through like, okay, what's the storyline? So like, you know, in comparison to the movie mm-hmm. that's coming out. And the thing is with Marvel is Marvel kind of sticks to a lot of the comic book storylines. Yes. And that's what I love about Marvel Cinematic Universe. Because it has its ups and downs, its goods and bads. Mm-hmm. The bads for me is that they PG-13 the fuck out of a lot of shit. And I don't mm-hmm. like that shit. And be, they be trying to add TikTok humor to their shit. And I don't like that shit. But aside from that and them trying to modernize it to why we're 2022 century. Right. Right. Um, I really enjoy that they stick to what we have read and grown accustomed to in the comics um and you know the late what's his face he would be okay with that he'd be yeah stanley yeah rest in peace mr stanley rest in peace Uh, i agree and the thing is they do like try to update it or they give us little twists or or like so if you look at the storylines the storylines are pretty much there but they'll like throw a twist in or throw a character in or add this or add that okay but for the most part which is what i love about marvel they stay true to the characters for the most part like even with what god the source Thanks. Yes, for the source. Yes. So even with like Scarlet Witch, like we saw where she came from when she started in Avengers, like was totally not the Scarlet Witch in the comics, right? Mm-hmm. And she but was then, even a bad guy in the beginning. Right. But then they evolved her to eventually be the Scarlet Witch from that the she comics. Is from the comics, yes. And it's like we're not going back to that bullshit ass pg-13 scarlet witch that we was getting because now she is in her bag she is the scarlet witch now she coming for necks and heads yes kill them niggas girl fuck fuck you me whereas with batman they just uh, batman dc they like just like acting like the comic books are are not a thing and just like it's just a shame Throw it out the window. Who wants that? Who needs that? Like it's 
Like you can, you tell the same story over and over in the comic books. Just do that on on movies and expand it. Keep the same. And I, and I understand they've had like fifty billion Batman's, but I feel like they've had fifty billion Spider Man's. But they, but even still, with having fifty billion Spider Man, they always stay true Give to us the a little core something thing. new. Yes, all the Spider Man's at least because we've had many, many fucking Spider Man's. Let me tell you that. But right. um, at least each Spider-Man they chose stuck to one core value of Spider-Man. Like Andrew Garfield Spider-Man. He wasn't the nerdy one, but he was the cocky jokester Spider-Man that we get in the comics that always has to have the last word. So right. I was like, okay, this is a little different from the Spider-Man we're used to, but it's still one aspect of Spider-Man that we're used to, if that right. makes sense. No, it is. And so it's so even watching like in, uh, you know, the Spider-Man movie and watching just like all of them come out and you just you it, you had like the different Spider-Mans, but they were all like still true to Spider-Man mm -hmm. to see the difference. And that is, I feel, where DC screws itself. Yeah. 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 They just fall short on that. And they capitalize so good on their fucking animated stories. And I just don't know why they can't like follow suit with their cinematic universe. It's Batman just... the animated series? That shit? Br gold. Gold. I love that shit. Especially when they first introduced Damian Wayne. Bro, we really get into a whole comic book segment. <laughs> yeah, we, 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 we need to go back to these nominations. But yeah, yeah. I, look, look, <laughs> readers, we're going to have a whole nother side segment for that. If y'all want it, for real. Comment down below or, or message us if you want us to, to dissect Marvel versus <laughs> Entertainment <laughs> in color. Go ahead. Ahead and fucking shoot us a message if you really want to hear us ramble about this shit because we could really ramble about this shit. Trust for real, me. for real. Um, okay, oh, shows of 2022. Um, Abbott Elementary. Have you gotten to that yet? Before I've you even move first, forward, <laughs> I've watched I've the first couple you. episodes. I have not gotten to, to you watch it. Motherfucker. Because my, another show that I watch a recap comes on on Wednesday, so I can't. I thought that recap is a recap for a reason, girl. These are <laughs> new caps, okay? <laughs> this is um, new. Get caught yeah, up. So I will get back to this. Season two together, okay? Because yeah. we still got to watch Orphan Black. Don't forget that. Yes, we do. We do. Um, Better Call Saul, Grey's Anatomy, House of Dragons, mm -hmm. Obi Wan Kenobi. Saturday Night Live, which I don't understand why it's in this category. Stranger Things and This Is Us. I have a, a personal preference of these shows, but what's your preference out of these shows? What would you vote for? For are we saying show of the year? Show of the of twenty twenty two. Show of twenty twenty two. I will vote for Abbott Elementary mainly because like they um act like the actors and actresses that they got going on there dems was like some regular ass everyday niggas and shit and she really put on for them niggas and gave them a spotlight like the um the old teacher the black one but like she was a regular regular ass nigga and then she got on the show and now like she won her she won a grammy you feel me like imagine how you feel like i really fuck with that like giving back to the community, showing love. So my vote would definitely go for Abbott Elementary. I'm supposed to be starting and finishing fucking um, House of Dragons soon with my homegirl, uh, Rach. Shout out, Rach. You feel me? We Shout out, Rachy. Yo. We about to watch that bitch um, soon. One of, these, one of these weeks, we just got to work out our schedules and shit. Because I'm not going to hold you. House of Dragon, that incest shit. They be throwing me off. <laughs> it be really, it be throwing me off. The way that girl looking at her uncle, it made me sick in the stomach. 
I think they're going. I think they're going to do a new series. They said based on a black character. I have to look more into it. I don't watch that show, so I can tell you. But House of Dragons has mm-hmm. had the most black people I've seen because Game of Thrones don't really got niggas, but they got niggas in my fucking House of Dragons. I fuck with that. Yeah. I fuck with that heavy. I was like, okay, bro, you got the ancient niggas here. You know what I'm saying? Niggas, niggas is up. You feel me? <laughs> So I guess they're they're going to spin off those people because they 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 couldn't spin it off for for them for and the uh, main story mm-hmm. yeah for the main story um so but I, I it's my vote I, what about you I would vote for this is us this is us is that this a love show us. that sounds like it's a love not show. a love show it's a it's Murder? a drama oh. it's a drama but Nobody it's a family die? drama huh anybody die. Yes, people died. Oh, yeah. Um, I will say it was the last season. It's probably one of the best series I've ever watched, and that last fe- the the last few episodes um, that aired this year were amazing, and just the way they handled and explained death. There's only one other show I feel like explained death. But like e- equivalent or or better than that, and that's the good place. What you mean, explain death? Like their take on on what happens when you die. When you die, mm. yeah. Have you watched the Good Place? No, I have not. I actually live under a rock, as you know. If you've been listening to these episodes, y'all <laughs> y'all know I really do live under a fucking rock, apparently. <laughs> but I've never heard of that shit. If y'all heard about it, you got to drop a like. Thank you. Oh, my God. The Good Place was a comedy on NBC. And it's like, I, I started watching it right before the season. You and that, right before I, the season? Right before the last season. I, oh, I before think the I, last season. Okay, yeah, I about it. I was confused. And I think there's four or five seasons, and then they they had they were like they were ending it, and I was like, oh, let me check this out. And I watched an episode, and I was hooked. That that series, that comedy was amazing, um, hilarious, well acted. Uh, listen, if you have not watched The Good Place, it is on Netflix. It is so worth it. It's four seasons. Watch The Good Place. I report back. I am imploring you as well, Glee. You would love it. It's it's like dark humor, but like just hilarious. You would love it, actually. Yeah. If it got a little dark humor, I might be. I might get jiggy with it. Yeah. Actually, we might we might have to watch that shit together after Orphan Black. We'll just watch one episode for Black. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Like it's so it, it's you so it's good, the, fellas, good. What the good place? Mm, the good place. Yeah, um, and it's so funny because I I started watching it and my son started watching it with me and we were both hooked and we like watched the entire series together. So yeah, it was it was it was a good series. Um, let's see what else do they have? Music. Ooh, these are gonna be fun. Album of the year. Okay, can I break it down into fucking um uh, fucking um uh... categories? Yes, there we go. I was I had a brain fart. Thank God for you. Because <laughs> I not remember that word. But if we break it down into categories, pop album of the year, if it's considered pop, Renaissance, Renaissance, that's my mm. fucking shit. Now on. B album of the years is that Isley Brothers album. That new Isley Brothers album, they haven't dropped the f- like a real album since 2004 or five, mm-hmm. I believe. And this new 2022 album, girl, it got me wanting to fall in love just so I could sing these shits to this girl and shit. You feel me? I like. <laughs> You know, these new R&B cats, they don't really be singing about love from a place of experience. 
they sing about it from a place of knowing and watching, but not from a place of experience. The way these niggas be talking about love, they be talking about little nit nitpicks and little tiny things that they experience with they shawty that they could sing about. And that's what I love about it. You could feel that shit. I love music that you can actually feel it like re- reverb with, you know, just vibe with that shit. I love that shit. So the new album, Make Me Say It Again, comma, Girl by Osley Brothers. That's my jam. Um, so that's R&B album of the year. Um, we are gonna go to hip hop. I'm waiting for Kodak album to drop. <laughs> Okay, that's my favorite rapper, Coda Black. My favorite mm-hmm. rapper. I'm waiting his album to drop. Soon. Did you hear he's dating Monica? I did hear that. And I saw that they posted a picture on Instagram together that they were going on their first date. Um, and I was like, you know, hey, whatever floats your boat. I know a lot of Zoes that really me included really into older women. Um yeah. That's good to know. I'm, 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 maybe I need to find me a Haitian man. <laughs> yeah, maybe, because we, we, we're an island of lover boys. Like, we really just love hard. We love hard. Um, Some love so hard that they cheat a lot. <laughs> I was going to say, the only thing is, we ain't having any children. So, <laughs> yeah. no cheating, because uh, just no entering this relationship, we ain't having children. So. Yeah, so I mean, as long as that's more fucking communicated, then you should be scraped. But we <laughs> love hard, and I'm I'm happy if it's for real, for real, and not just like a little publicity stunt. Because what I've been seeing about Monica being posting, like, it looks like she actually really fuck with kid. So you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, yo, I fuck with it that you fucking with it for real. And I'm fucking with it that, you know, he found something that he fucking with. Now he can leave all these other bitches alone and start really... Maybe he dropped a fucking I'm in love album. You know how Lil Durk always want to make a, like, love song for, like, one of his girls and shit? Mm-hmm. I need Kodak to start doing that. I need more niggas to start doing that. Like, what Lil Durk do? Like, Lil Durk was de- dating Dej Loaf, if you know who that is, by the way. Yeah, but, like- um... Dej Lo, he he made a song called My Beyonce for her, with her on the track. And I was like, yo, that's so fire. It's like, shawty, my Beyonce. Dirk and Dej. Yeah, I was like, yo, he calling her his Beyonce. Like, how high of a praise that can that be? Like, I need more of my brothers, my niggas to really start uplifting their shorties. If they, they shorty, if they a shorty, like, what's wrong with that? I don't know what's wrong with that. Uplift your girl, nigga, because she going to lift you up higher than that. Trust. Are they still together? Hell no, they ain't still together. <laughs> but <laughs> what they was, though, you know what I'm saying? He, he had nothing but good shit to say about her. Oh, that's good. <laughs> and then he started dating this girl, India. And we had fucking about four or five tracks about India. He'd be promoting yeah. her business and his music about India. <laughs> Oh, he did. okay. He's like one of those. Okay. Well, listen, I can't. I can't hate it. The, the supportive yeah, guy. Support, but you know what I'm saying. At the same time, you know that Yank, that uh, not Yank, uh, that Yankee. You know that that American black boy. He done did uh, cheated on her. So now I don't know if any of them them songs hold weight. <laughs> But we we gonna move along from that part. We yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, for People's Choice, the albums of 2022 are Dawn FM by The Weeknd, Growing Up, Luke Combs, Harry's mm-hmm. House, Harry Styles, Mm-mm. Midnight, Taylor Swift, Mm-mm. Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers, Kendrick, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Renaissance by Beyonce. Oh. Special by Lizzo and Un Verano Sinti by Bad Bunny. That's a good one, too. Bad Bunny is a good pick. You know what my choices are on this. So. I don't know what your choices is because they got Lizzo and Beyonce on that. Yeah, it's between those two. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's going to be a hard I, like, I, I probably would go with Renaissance, but if Lizzo won, I would not be mad. 
Not yeah, I, I knew that would have been a close pick for you. Because I heard Lizzo and I heard Beyonce, and I was like, I know you don't give a fuck about nobody else. It's like right when you said them two. No. <laughs> so it just really boils down to what mood you are of the week. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. Hmm. And let's see, pop culture. Um, social celebrity of 2022. So I'm thinking they mean like who's been on social media because I don't understand otherwise. Um, they have Bad Bunny, Charlie Puth, Doja Cat, Little Nas X, Liz Lizzo, Reese Witherspoon, Selena Gomez, and Snoop Dogg. How the fuck don't they got Cardi B on that shit? I don't know. That shit don't make no sense to me. Cardi B the only one. Oh, well, I can't say the only one. Actually, I'm capping. I was say, Doja, mm-hmm. Cat, Doja Cat definitely be interacting with her fucking followers and people all the time. She yeah, be on that's a weird girl, but she she lived her weirdness to her fucking truth. Like, yeah. she be on Instagram, bald as fuck, looking ugly as shit because she ain't got her hair done, makeup done, not, nothing done. She just looked like she just crusty chilling in her crib, which is okay. You can be crusty chilling in your crib, comfortable, whatever. And just making beats on the spot and making music on the spot, you know, off of whatever they followers say in the chat. And I, I fuck with it. I really fuck with Doja Cat. Like, you know, live your truth, even though you're showing feet in racial chat rooms to fucking white supremacists. You know, yeah. you do you, though. I think it'll probably be down to Doja or Lizzo, to be honest. Lizzo be interacting with her peoples, too? Oh, hard. If you follow her on TikTok and Twitter... Yes. Well, so like you know, if a a person quote tweeted her, she may or may not just quote tweet back. Yeah, she's right. she's very 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 um, with the people for the people. The, yeah, for the people. yeah. And she she'll duet you if you like, you know, do your videos to her songs or like you know make statements about her and then she'll and she won't say anything. She'll let you like talk and then she'll just like react with her facial voice you know, facial movements. It's, she's really interactive. I love Lizzo. Hmm. Okay, okay, okay. I ain't know that about Lizzo because, you know, back in episode two, you know, fucking Mika had to put me on a Lizzo, which, by the way, I still fuck with that album. Cool yep. little groovy album. Totally. Yeah, I'm going to hate on it. Um, so, uh, there, there's some categories, you know, like TV stars and Game changer of the year, pop podcasts, lots of music categories, lots of TV categories, and lots of movie categories. So, if you want to go vote for uh, people, choice awards, go vote in droves for your favorite celebrities and shows and stuff. And you know me, I'm I'm rooting for everybody black. So. Mm-hmm. And if you want to, if you don't know who to vote for, then vote for all of my biased opinions because I want to see all my biased opinions win. Thank you. <laughs> um. So on to other news. Um. There was recently a scandal at the Miss USA pa- pageant. Um. A few of the women who participated in the pageant accused the pageant themselves of rate favoritism um in their choice of winner um it seems like both the winners state and the national organization shared a lot of um advertisers and judges and it seemed like there was basically the fix being in for that person that won, which was Miss Texas, who did win Miss USA this year. So based on the uproar and conversations that had, it looks like uh, many people in the Miss U- uh, USA organization have now been Um, either removed or suspended by the Miss Universe uh, organization uh, who does actually own Miss USA. So um, we see this all the time. We're always like, oh, the fix was in. Um, But if there's a lot of 
to out there if you want to go take a look at the Miss USA scandal. It, it yeah, it was kind of blatant. Um, and you could see that nobody actually was very well, nobody um that was competing was very um supportive of the winner. Um so yeah, it was not fun. <laughs> it was actually really weird to watch them actually they normally go and hug the winner and you know rile her up that she won and they literally left the stage so really that's so shysty what the fuck wrong with them hoes because they felt like it was, they felt like it was not fair um so yeah um on other news Bo broderick hunter and mariama diallo are engaged if you don't know who they are, they're currently um, like an it couple. They're actors. They also model. Broderick, I think, was an insecure. Uh, Mariama, she's been in a lot of uh, newer stuff. I think like a few BT Plus shows. Um, so they're beautiful. If you have not, go, go follow them. Go see. Th they're gorgeous together. Um, congratulations to that. Glee, did you know that Pornhub was blocked from Instagram? I do not use Instagram personally. I'll probably upload one picture on Instagram every two to three years. So I don't really use that app. I didn't know, though. That's interesting. Girls be showing titties on live all the time. Well, apparently their page was taken. And this week they decided they were going to try to re-enter Instagram. And Instagram was like, eh, 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 eh. So they blocked their second page that they did try to start. And this uh, is official pages as well, my dad, yeah, correct? Yes, yes, this is official <laughs> business pages. I am a bit confused. I'm I'm with you. I'm a little confused at why they're not allowed to have pages. Yeah, like you should at least maybe I I understand if you don't want them posting like like you porn. Know, buck ass. Yeah, porn, like literally buck ass naked women on their fucking pages and down the timeline. Yeah, I could get that. But them just being not being able to create a, a account, period. That's actually kind of wow for me i've been seeing or maybe it's just my paranoid mind but slowly and slowly we have been losing our free speech and our free acts to express ourselves and why do you think that is this is an example of that why do you think that is why um uh, mainly because of what i've just been seeing it's just like Niggas can't have an opinion on shit. Even if your opinion is wrong, you should still be allowed to have an opinion. In my in my example. In my what's the word? What's the word I'm looking for? In my motherfucking uh, opinion. Wow, I've been saying opinion and I'm looking for the word opinion and I can't find the word opinion in my brain. <sighs> that jungle juice got me fucked up. <laughs> For real. And you want us to do episode 10. Drunk. No, we got to do episode 10. Drunk. Y'all hear that, everybody? Episode 10, we doing it boozy. I don't know about all that. First 10. Uh, we going to have me. On here. Yes. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, um, you know, for example, I like like I said, I do not agree with none of these people that I will be naming. Um, I don't even really know what none of these people be doing for real because I don't follow no celebrity shit. But for example, Andrew Tate, he got, you know, booted off of everything for his opinion. Kanye booted off everything for his opinion. His opinion you know. was terrible, but go ahead. Yeah, it's terrible, but you should still be able to have your own opinion. Oh, no. But see, this is Hostile the thing. or not, people tell me fucking go kill myself online all the time, every day, anyways. So, and they uh, should be removed. Yeah. This is my thing. You can absolutely have your opinion, but not if, but, but 
it should not get to stand if it's harmful to people. But this is my thing. I said to you the other day, I you asked me if I ever bought Yeezys or whatever. I have not supported Kanye in a very long time because my opinion, he was anti-black. So my line for Kanye was back when he was being anti-black. Mm -hmm. Like other people's line is when he's being, you know, anti-Jewish. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So like, the, like the, he, he had to go to the extreme for some people. I, I was done with him back then. Which, you know, everybody got a different, a different stroke. You know what I'm saying? Everybody has a different line. And so the thing is, if you're, if you're being harmful to somebody, you can't then be upset when they, you hit their line. Now, just having an opinion, if I if I'm like, oh, you know, I think McDonald's is trash, which I don't, but you know, some people think McDonald's is trash. Yeah. How no, nobody should McDonald's is made out of human kids. Yeah. Nobody should ha have uh, like an affront to me because I don't like McDonald's. If that's the case, there are. I feel though because you are a Twitter person. On Twitter, you are not allowed to have an opinion. <laughs> there are literally segments of Twitter people who will come on just to dissent your opinion. Mm -hmm. You could be talking about, I love fucking waffles. I'm in love with waffles. All I eat is waffles every motherfucking day of the week, every breakfast lunch and dinner i love waffles and then someone gonna come a fucking long and say a fucking shit about what the fuck is wrong with pancakes now you're anti-pancakes like bitch i wasn't talking about no damn pancakes i'm talking about i love waffles like stop yeah. telling me about what i'm not talking about and that's how twitter is long yeah. story short you can Pretty be much. talking about a and then c comes out of nowhere skipping B completely and just saying, no, this is wrong. Like, just the other day on the timeline, mm -hmm. which was viral, there was this girl talking about how she loves spending breakfast or, like, mornings, not even breakfast, mornings, with her husband just drinking coffee. And it's like, oh, my schedule, that's very... Was uh, that the coffee garden lady? Yes. The coffee garden lady. And people over here down her back talking about Oh, that's so privileged of you. Bitch, what the fuck you mean that's privileged of me? Hello? It's my schedule. It's our schedule. We make it work for us. Why do you have an opinion on this? And no one can have opinions on fucking Twitter, apparently. That's what I've delegated. <sighs> Twitter's bad for that. Um, but so I do, I do see what you're saying. I just don't feel like a Kanye is a good example of that. I um, still think it is because at the end of the day, he ain't say he gonna kill none of them niggas. It wasn't really harmful. It was just ignorant. And you should be proud to have your ignorant opinions at the end of the day in America as well. Do you feel like you feel? Trump but you president. just said you. But you just said you don't like ignorant niggas. So how is it that you're supposed I, I, to? I, just because I don't like it, don't mean that I don't think you should have your dumbass ignorant opinion. You should still be able to have your dumbass ignorant opinion and be able to talk. So about white it. people can sit there and say about us that we're dirty. We don't want to work. We have kids and don't do anything for them. They're gonna for, say that shit regardless. We are. They, they, they don't have to say that if we do do things to stop them. If we fight back against those opinions, because those things harm us. We, we It's harder for jobs. It's harder for us to get homes. It's harder for us to get mortgages. It's hard. Like, th that is how it harms us. Yes, it's not, uh, oh, I'm going to kill you, but it's rhetoric that will harm you in the long run and and i do i do want to preface it that p 
people do not understand the long-standing marketing campaign against black people that have happened in this country once we decided we did not want to work in this country for free or pittance and it's very ingrained it's it's very overt they ingrained it into the fabric of marketing that this is how black people are and the minute that you become atypical back to Tulsa, Oklahoma, Black Wall Street, then what they've done in this country is burn our shit down. And still do. And still do. That is why I was saying to you that that's why a lot of times watching those movies, yes, it's good knowledge for us to understand. And, you know, we should know about these things because there's a lot of people who don't know about Tulsa, who don't know about Rosewood. Like, you didn't know about it, right? Like, mm-hmm. the, the, those things are important information for us to know so that we can know how to combat it and see it and move forward. The problem is, is it, it it's still happening (laughs) and we're still continuously being traumatized. So then you're taking in the traumatic stuff that you deal with every day and then have to take in the traumatic stuff that we did. We, we went through in the past and the traumatic stuff we consuming on TV. But, but that's why I say like those, those rhetorics, like I get opinion, but those, those are rhetoric that are harmful. And that, and I understand, and I know people think that, oh, words don't mean anything. Words in this country could be the difference between life or death. Hmm. That's something to think about. And tonight, I will not be thinking about that shit. No. So, moving on to TV movie uh, news and gossip. Uh. Oh, so sorry to Pornhub. We we don't agree with that decision. Yeah, um, we we don't. We think you should have porn account, but just don't post your porn on the timeline because kids be following that shit. Exactly. Um. So in uh, Love Island T, we we have Zimmy takes London. I don't know if you saw Glee, but Zeta and Timmy flew to London this week. Oh, that's so yeah. sweet. Little American yeah. boy left for London for the first time. Yeah. And I don't know if it's for the first time, but I think his father is Italian, so we never know. But um they met his, uh they met her mom. Well, he met her mom and her brothers, and they are out in London doing some press and touring London. So I, I love that. If you could travel with I your feel partner. Bad for you. Why? He got to eat beans for breakfast. Oh, Lord. Well, I mean, she's... she's but she African, is a nigga. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about what he's eating, so... It's just like my, my Jamaican family in London, they don't just feed us, uh, you know, proper English breakfast. Like, we still get Jamaican food. <laughs> well, that's because they yardies in motherfucking uh, uh, London. You know, a lot of yardies is in london or just the united kingdom to be honest i don't know why i got like maybe like three four jamaican homeboys born in jamaica living Mm -hmm. over there Mm -hmm. i have a whole segment of my family over there and then my that's my dad's side of the family and then my grandmother moved from jamaica when she was like 20 years old and went to london and never left so she's also there. My mom recently went and visited Ain't her. your granny over there too? Yeah. I'd be sick. I got to pay a $2,000 fee to go see my granny. Damn. Yeah, I haven't seen her since I was 11. So I haven't seen yeah. her. We got to reunite Mika with her <laughs> granny, y'all. Yeah. We, well, I was going to go this summer, but, you know, the whole COVID rule. So hopefully mm-hmm. in the near future. But my mom did go visit her. So that was good. That's good. You got to face on her? While your mama was there? She took, she took video, but no, I didn't FaceTime her. You know, like, because my mom my mom said when she visited her in in the older folks' home that she had, that she's in, there wasn't good Wi-Fi. 
Mm. You could only like just record the video and then like when she could upload it when she got back to the hotel. Yeah. Okay, I understand. Yeah. So hopefully that will happen. But on to Bachelor news. Um, Dean and Kaylin are engaged. So Dean was from Rachel's season of The Bachelorette. I don't remember where Kaylin was from, but they met on Bachelor in Paradise, which I'm currently covering on my channel. So make sure you're watching the recaps. Um, and they are finally engaged. So congratulations to Dean and Kaylin on news and gossip for Bachelor. This is T. Apparently, Victoria F. Victoria, mm. who is on the current season season of Bachelor in Paradise. Right now, she's in a, a bit of a love between um, Alex and uh, Tyler. Alex from also from Rachel's season of The Bachelorette, and um, Johnny. Sorry, and Johnny from Rachel and Gabby season of the bachelorette she isn't in, in between the little love triangle right now but she was recently as in this week spotted in italy with greg grippo who we know was on katie's season of the bachelorette so they looked a little hugged up who only god knows what's going on with that but I will say I'm here for it. On to Love is Blind news. So as you know, the current season of Love is Blind, Love is Blind season three, it's out. I think a few episodes dropped this morning. I have to catch up on that. But I'm in no rush because I'm not hearing really good things. Apparently, even... You know, I saw on my timeline about motherfucking Love Island today. Or not Love, Love Island, Island. Um, Love is Blind. Yeah. Three. That was like, well, so I guess Love is Blind season three is all about insecure people. And I was like, oh, that's not a good thing. <laughs> no. And even our queen, Lauren Speed Hamilton, was speaking out about how she did not like the fact that the black women on the show were not being shown in prominence. Um, and so that Lauren Speed Hamilton, first of all, marketing queen, second of all, most successful Love is Blind contestant right about now um, from season one, and she's very still tied into the show and Netflix. She does a uh, podcast for Netflix. She does promotion. So the fact that she's speaking out says to me, very concerning. Very, very, very concerning. And last year, we know we had some issues with season two where they also seem to cut out all the women, <clears throat> not just the women, the black women, but also the women that were plus size, we we did not see them. So very Wait, concerning. Plus size women on Love Is Blind season three. Last season two, there was some, but they cut them all their storylines out. What? That's crazy. I love I me some big women's. Yeah, I, they. I follow a few of them on my Instagram. And it was very disappointing. They're beautiful, smart, sensational women, and they uh, uh, they cut them all out. It was it was disappointing. Um, I'm not sure about this year if that's the same case. They cut out the plus size women, but apparently they they cut out the black women. So, Ooh, <laughs> tomato, tomato, tomato. Very disappointing. Um, so that's it for me for TV news movie news and gossip um on to relationship topic so we had two this this pod um you could go with yours if you want i'll go ahead and start that off you want me to yeah okay so my question to you glee is do you think that you would prefer a partner who challenges you, or do you think you prefer a partner who accepts you as you are? 
Me personally, I love a woman that can challenge me because we are uh, ever growing people. And, um, you know, I don't want to stay stagnant in myself. I want to always grow and have like my significant other that's with me grow with me. So if you challenge me, then that means we both going to look for a solution that we don't have together. And okay. I see it. So for me, while I do think I want a partner who who challenges me, I do feel like, especially at the age that I am, not to say I'm set in my ways, there's always room for growth, but there are basic parts of me that I feel like any partner should be able to accept. And I feel like if you can't accept that, I don't think that we would be able to have an effective relationship. Um, because people change, but they don't change that much. Um, so I think I would prefer the latter because I also feel like you, like I'm not, I don't want to say I'm not fussy, but I'm, I'm, I'm pretty accepting of a lot in a person because I understand that people are human and I understand that everybody comes to things differently. And if we're not compatible, we're just not going to be compatible. But if I am heading into a relationship with you, I have, I'm going to understand that the things that make you, you. So I feel like on the flip side, you kind of have to understand the things that make me, me and appreciate and like it. Otherwise, why are you in a relationship with me? That's facts. Because why waste why waste any of our times? Honestly, we we could be getting so much more done. I just exactly. Um, exactly. So that's my opinion on it. Now to your topic. Um. Let me see, because I got to refresh my memory on what that was. I can read it to you. Okay. Why, read it. <laughs> why are mama's boys considered a red flag and what makes them a red flag? Or is it mainly the mama y'all see as a red flag and would you date that? And you said you did some research, so I don't know if you, you remember your research. Um, so yeah, that's a, that's a question that I have wanted to pose you because I have been asking around and finding out, um, you know, information from other people to see kind of what it is. And yeah, so can you answer that to me? What, what are some red flags in a, in a mama's boy, if there are any red flags that pertain to you? And how do you feel about that? And is it the mama mainly that's a problem with a mama's boy? or? I mean, I, I don't think I mind a mama's boy. Um, not at all. Um, I feel like if someone is caring of their mother, that means that they would be caring of any woman. Um, I think the concern would be kind of is it's me or her <laughs> um and not to say that like i have to be first like even when i was married you know if if my my mother-in-law was coming with us somewhere i would let her sit in the front seat and i would sit in the back and even if it was my car like i don't care um so that never bothered you having the mother mama take this front seat? No, not at all. Not that. Um, other things that's at me, like if we had stuff to do in our house, but that got sacrificed for stuff that had to be done in his mother's home, I felt like would not be fair because we have our own priorities and our priorities is your priorities, right? Because that's our house. Um, 
but so, a lot of times I felt like with my ex-husband, um, that that household was more important than what we had to do in our priorities. So that would be more of a concern for me. Like, is our home the priority? Mm-hmm. Is our relationship a priority? Or is your mother and your relationship more of a priority than ours? Yeah. Um, and I feel like it's definitely levels to this mama boy shit. I ain't gonna hold you. Cause after my extensive little research and um interviewing and asking these questions to a lot of people, um, what I've gathered is like the main consensus of like women is that they perceive mama's boys as men that are not entirely independent Mm -hmm. um, and basically are yes men to their mamas and i wanted to really know why they believe that but a lot of the time um i've asked like wide varieties of age groups as well this question um for the younger age group um, that's really how they perceive them as just yes men to their mamas. And for the niggas that they fucking with that are around their age group, that may actually be the case. They really do, you know, probably still wet behind the ears and yes men to their mamas because they don't really know the whole world like that. And right. um, for older women that I've spoken to and some married women as well, um, it mainly just depended on the level of mama's boy that they was. And the level that was um, tolerable, or actually the level that was intolerable to them was the level that they had to, they didn't, the mama's boy didn't differentiate what household was the priority. Right. And um, that was a big thing for them as well. But for those that did find a mama's boy that was able to um, differentiate households and know where to set boundaries and draw the line, they've sought or have found the best lovers that they could have ever hoped for because they get treated like a queen because they are now the new mama of the household. Mm -hmm kids and you know a nigga gonna niggas love their mamas so you a mama now nigga love you is what i was told so that's what i kind of wanted to know i kind of wanted to just find out like what is because i'm not gonna hold you mm-hmm. i'm a mama's boy but i'm not like a mama's boy like what other people say i'm a grandmama boy <laughs> you know my granny my granny, my like my ride or die, like she raised me, she raised me up, grew up in her house back on the islands, you know what I'm saying? Whenever mm-hmm. I was getting my ass whooped up, tore up by my folks, you know what I'm saying? I ran to granny, she'd be like, Don't hit my baby, don't hit my grandbaby no more. I like that's her. why you're the way you are, but go ahead. Like you know, granny, you ride it for me. I can't do no wrong, Granny. Yeah, so you know what I'm saying? I'm a grandma before for real. <laughs> but uh, you know, but I can I've I've seen some mama's boys and some can be very spoiled, you know, and then there's the other level of mama's boys that always gotta check in with their mama whenever they make him uh, big decisions or even small decisions really when it comes to decisions they're not sure about they'd be like let me ask my mama and i'd be like nigga you're a grown-ass man but you can't just fucking make decisions yourself you know they trust in their mama so you know i feel like there ain't nothing wrong with that but if you're a nigga and you don't have your own discernment that can be a problem as a man if you don't have your own discernment. There's nothing wrong with getting a second opinion. Nothing wrong at all. But if that second opinion is your first opinion, every opinion that you're trying to make for yourself, that's a problem, if that makes sense. Uh, so, yeah. I mean, so. I, th- I think that that's what it comes down to. It's 
with it, the level of mama's boy is you. <laughs> yeah, that's what yeah. it comes down to. Yeah, it, it's and and like you said, discernment. Like some men, and, and I think that's that's the case for a lot of things. Like some men don't have discernment to put their wives over their, you know, ex wives or you know their let alone their mothers or you know put their children over their wives or what the wives over their children like it, it just really is levels to the type of discernment of and priority you have in your relationships what's important to you and so that would be my basis on if you you know are self-proclaimed mama's boy it's not a red flag for me um I would just observe what does that mean? How how does how do you prioritize it? If we're in bed having sex and your mother calls, are you gonna drop everything to go run to her if she's not sick or ill? That's facts. That's facts, that's facts. And um now this is a little sub question though. Would you be like would you feel a type of way if um said mama's or said man? always go mm -hmm. to their mama for another opinion like let's let's say they definitely already spoke to you about it um if it's a big decision um that y'all gotta make they spoke to you about it but they like you know hold on let me get my mama opinion about it for everything that y'all y'all be decision making how would you feel about that i been through that <laughs> and okay so we now we listening from the experience of an experienced woman, y'all, y'all, ladies and gentlemen. I will say this, which is also why my ex is not my person. My my opinion was very, very rarely valid or taken into consideration at all. He he would choose strangers over me, let alone his mother. I would tell him something like. Let's say he was looking for a job. I'm like, oh, you should go here because they have this for jobs and blah, blah, blah. Months later, he would go, he would be like, oh, my coworker told me I should go here because they have this and this for jobs and whatever. I said, I told you that months ago. Oh, yeah, you did. So he would do that with just about anybody, including his mother, especially his mother. So if his mother was like, co-sign something okay yeah we could do it she didn't oh well my mother said you know maybe this and and listen i'm gonna tell you the truth i am not married to them man but i love his mother down she's a wonderful woman i still call her my mother-in-law um i love her so it's not on her but again it's on him because it's like where's the discernment for prioritizing your wife's voice in your relationship. Yeah. Uh, uh, very unfortunate that you, you know, you went through that. But what did you, was there any like pluses that you've experienced dating a mama's boy that you could say? Um, well, he was the only oh, son. Actually, not you said married, so shit. I married him. So he was the only son. But, oh, um, shit. That's a red flag. <laughs> well, it wasn't you, my cousin. Right? You were mama's boy and you was the only son? Yeah, he, he was the only was son. On. He was spoiled as fuck. I know he was. <laughs> but he wasn't necessarily the favorite either. So, oh. But he's also the only son. So for him, it was, again, you know, his mother was priority because he's her only son. I hate hearing that shit, bro, because I'm the only boy, too. My pops, mom, and my mama, they all be saying, you my only son. <laughs> it gotta do whoop de whoop And I'd be like, yo, dog, bro, like, <laughs> y'all got to stop with these gender roles, bro. <laughs> If I wasn't here, who gonna take out the trash? Y'all gonna let that shit build up? <laughs> <laughs> um, I thankfully don't have those issues, and I, you know, I see stuff that happens with um, mothers and sons all the time, and I always like say to myself, "Please don't let me ever be that woman." Mm -hmm. 
um, but I have two sons. So, and you know, to me, they're, they're the same. I don't love one son over the other. So, um, they, do I have to treat them differently? Yeah. They're different kids, different personalities. Mm-hmm. Different it, it is, cultures, of course. Right. But I, I love them both the same. That, be, that being said, um, yeah, so I would never want, like I told my youngest son, because he, sometimes he has these misogynistic like ideals and I just, I try to have conversations with him. And I, I, there was one day I was just finally like, your wife, when you get married, just let her, tell her to come to me. Just tell her to call me. <laughs> you know, <laughs> if there's anything she needs, I will help her through. I'm here for her. Mm-hmm. Because <laughs> like, ugh. But, um, so I always tell myself, you know, I see stories and I'm just like, let me never be that mother. Let me never be that mother. I promise you that I, I don't want to be that mother. You don't want to be that too imposing mama. Yeah, no. Mm-hmm. no. That's good. At least you won't let them grow and make their decisions on their own and shit, you know. Yeah. Go with that. Don't, don't cuddle these boys. I try not to. My ex coddles them more than I do, to be fair. But you know, so because they're his sons. Yeah. Son. There's <laughs> there's always a good like you could coddle your jits, but there's there's a limit to shit in my opinion because like bro, fuck, bro, like I'll be having to deal with these jits that's coming into society now, and it's like, bro, what the fuck did your parents teach you? <laughs> nah, shit. Apparently. I be that should be killing me. So whenever I have my gist, bro, I'm I will make my utmost ability to make them a good product of society. Yeah. Yeah, I mean for me it's not a red flag. Um but you know I I say that I'm not fussy. Like there's there's very few red flags. Um, that that stand out to me, um, like men calling women females. That's a red flag to me. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, um, let me see. I feel, like I feel like you can't really um, blame niggas too much on that because niggas really never. I now as a like a educated nigga you now know that like that's a thing but like mm-hmm. a lot of niggas is like really ignorant to knowing that if that's a thing for women for real between mm-hmm. female and being called a woman woman yes yeah. um niggas just see it as just gender like yo you a girl you a female you a woman it's yeah. all falls on the same umbrella and that's how I seen it for a long time as well. I ain't gonna hold y'all. Back in my youth, I was definitely a little misogynistic, maybe a little. Really? Yeah, oh. but I've gone through a lot of um personal growth and shit like like that. Outside of that, too, um, have relationships that taught me otherwise. Um, so you know what I'm saying? Like, I can't, I can't like down on me. I, I don't I don't really personally I don't really see that as a net red flag. I just think a nigga just not educated on the matter because that's how I feel like I was when I was, you know, talking like that. But um, you know, right. more mindful. No, and I I get that. I think that's the thing for me. It's like you're not evolved yet enough for me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But I'm also a woman of a certain age. Like you're, you're, you're just not gonna be evolved enough for me if you, if you don't understand the difference between just oh them females, mm-hmm. to you know women are always like it's just a, a you know verbiage. The the connotation is just different to me. Yeah, cause women pay attention to that shit way more than niggas do. I promise you that. Yeah. So, um. Yeah, like there, there's few things that are red flags for me. Um, those are not one of them. Um, but you know, there are, I do have some, <laughs> but otherwise, I, I, I don't feel like I'm so, but I've also evolved into like the person I am. Mm-hmm. 
in my to you know twenties, probably was way more judgmental on things. Mm -hmm. I'm not as judgmental now about certain things because it just there's I mean just there's just some things that who gives a shit like we're grown if we like each other if we could come to a compromise or certain shit sure like let's let's do this if if we can't then we just not meant to to be together and that's okay too uh, which is why you know I can sometimes just be friends with the person I probably need to stop doing that <laughs> being but, friends with the person afterwards yes because yeah. I know that's that's your thing you <laughs> stop that right now you <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I don't know. So what are what are red flags on is uh being a daddy's girl a red flag for you? Um I've only ever like tried to talk to one specific, like daddy's girl. I ain't gonna hold you. Most of these girls bro, got daddy's issues. You know what I'm saying? They got daddy oh. issues. Not many women I encounter got are daddy's girls. Um, but the one woman that I did encounter that was a daddy's girl, um, I couldn't hold a candle to her daddy. And that, that you know, I fucked it all up for me, for real. She a cool <laughs> shawty. She talked so fucking much, though. Like, shit, girl, talked a lot. But, you know... The thing is, it's like she compared a lot of men to her father, and her f and a lot of um. I don't want to say a lot because I haven't personally had an experience with a lot of daddy's girls, but the, the experiences that I have had, they are materialistic, and I am not a materialistic girl, nigga. And the mm -hmm. last, like, daddy's girl I talked to, bro, her dad bought her a fucking Benz for her 24th birthday. So I was like, bro, I can't keep up. This the end of the road for me because this nigga got you a fucking brand new 2021 Benz for your birthday. Like, yo, I, I can't keep up with you. I can't, I can't hold a candle to that nigga. And that's what they be looking for. A nigga who can hold a candle to that nigga. And I'm not that. Mm. Mm. That's so a good side. Mm -hmm. I leave them alone. So when, because there's a nigga for every woman out there. And trust me, you won't find your nigga. And I'm not that nigga, though. I'm, <laughs> oh, I'm not going to waste your time or mine. I'm not that nigga. I, I'm specifically looking for someone who is not my father. Not that I have daddy. Well, I probably have a little bit of daddy issues, but I. <laughs> You're a I, I, woman. I know you got some. <laughs> yes. I, I, I just, I would prefer nobody like my father. So there's that. But that's a story for another day. Uh, <laughs> so I, do we have anything else on this topic? Let's see. Um. I think I think no. Not right now. Yeah. So that's it. Like uh you know, drop us a line. What's your thoughts on Mama's Boys? Is it a red flag for y'all? Maybe I put up a poll um when I post this on uh our Spotify. It, you know, is it a red flag for you? Is it no? And would you date one? Would you and date them? What? Let us know. Red flag. Let us know. Drop down mm -hmm. in the comments if you're on YouTube. Mm -hmm. If you're on Spotify, I know you can't comment, but you could go on Entertainment and Colors Twitter. Spotify. I think you can message on our Spotify. There, there's a way to message, but I also put up a poll. I have no idea, but let her figure all that shit out. <laughs> it is um, if it's not Spotify, it's on our Anchor uh, platform as well. So yeah. we'll figure that out. It will not kill you to just jump on the YouTube and you know yeah. put a poll there in the YouTube comment section. It, and while you there, like and subscribe. It really absolutely. Helps. Um, so that's it for relationship topics. Um, so on to what we are watching, which again, I am still not watching much, but I do have some stuff that are coming out in the next few um, and some news that we can go through. Um, 
So the Upshaws was recently renewed for a third season. So congratulations to them. That's a comedy on Netflix. Um, have you ever watched Blood and Water on, on Netflix? I ain't never heard of it, and I stopped paying for Netflix because all day options are just doo-doo garbage. I'd rather have Hulu. So there's that. Oh. Well, Blood and Water is a very popular uh, series, um, and um, it actually premieres November 25th. So if anybody's out there a Blood and Water fan, check that out next month. Oh, go um, ahead and watch that Blood and Water lovers. <laughs> Family Reunion, which is a comedy on Netflix, actually starts this week. Um, I think they're going into their final season. So uh, that stars Tia Mari uh, and uh, Loretta Devine. I love that show. My son loves that show. Uh, so go watch that. I definitely recommend it. The family reunion. Who we introduce? And is it is it something like that? Who we introduce? And probably not a talk show type shit, huh? No. What's family reunion? <laughs> it's a comedy. <laughs> is it like a Roscoe's Jenkins and Rocco family reunion? Yeah, of? kind of like that. Like so, they the, it started off. They came back for family reunion, and then they ended up ha- moving back home. Okay. And so, like that's what we're seeing. And he was a, I think he was a basketball player and, you know, like he came out of the league and it was, it's, it's actually a really cute show. I like it. Yeah, I, could get it even I would never watch it by myself, but I could definitely watch it with somebody. Watch it. It's, it's good. Um, so in other news, Cree Summers has joined the Iron Heart series that's to be premiering on Disney Plus in 2023, fall of 2023. How excited are you for this? Have Have you heard about the Iron Heart series? I have not. What that do? So Iron Heart is a um, comic about a black girl who takes over the um, suit of Iron Man. Her name is Riri Williams. She is a genius inventor, and she created the most advanced suit of armor since Iron Man. So Riri is actually getting a serialization in the show. I've yes. always seen her comics, but I've never read them. I've always seen the cover for them. I was like, where did this black girl Iron Man come from? Or Iron Woman. Yes. But I guess we about to find out. I'm looking forward to it because I've never read the comics, so this will be new to me. It'll be fresh. And pro tip, if you did not know, Riri Williams, the playing Riri Williams, and also be playing Riri Williams in Wakanda Forever coming out soon. So um, her name is Dominique Thorne. Her character does debut in um, Wakanda Forever. Really? So Riri going to be in Wakanda before we see her in her own show? Absolutely. Now, will it be the same character coming out of Wakanda into the same show? I think so. I think it's supposed to be a lead-in. Okay. So what that yeah. shit called again? Iron Heart? Iron Heart, yes. Okay. Gonna have to definitely put that on my fucking watch list. Really looking forward to seeing that now that I know. Yeah. And so um, Cree Summers will be in that. I'm excited for that. Love me some Cree Summers. Um... Yeah, like I'm excited for the entire thing. So can't wait for that. Um, let's see. That's it for TV movie. Do you have anything? Hell no, because I don't watch shit. Yeah, we're we're not watching shit. Uh, like we gotta <laughs> get to, we gotta get to watching. You see, we we got plans to watch a bunch of stuff together. We'll get it together. Um, on to the music segment. So Friday, October 28th is apparently single release day. Uh, because Chloe, Bailey, Scissor, Drake, 
21 Savage, and Rihanna all have. Wait, don't forget. This Friday. Who I spice. I spice. I spice <laughs> too. That new, that new girl that did me touching her titties and shaking her booty. Talking about I fucked on your bro. What did I do? She coming out with an album too on the 28th. Everybody yeah, dropping so on the 28th. Everybody dropping on the 28th. Um, Chloe's next single, um, SZA's first single of her uh, new album out of the 100 songs like we talked about last week. Drake's newest single, uh, 21 Savage. I'm not sure if he has an album no, out. No, it's a, it's a dual album. Drake and 21 Savage are dropping a collab album together. Oh, okay. See, this is why you're here, because I didn't know that shit. Yeah, it's um, a <laughs> Uh, um, I thought it was off his last album, which didn't, I mean, it, it went okay, but, you know, Beyonce. I only found out recently, recently that Drake dropped the album this year, too, so I had no idea that shit dropped. I did know, and it's it's funny enough, it's, again, the same genre as Lizzo and Beyonce, that, like, disco era feel. Uh, it's just that... Beyonce and Lizzo did it better. So Drake's kind of went to the wayside. Yeah, Drake, sorry. You took too long to drop something like this. Yeah, he should have, you know, maybe dropped the collab first and then his album, but hey. Um, and then Rihanna will be dropping, uh, I think, one of her singles from the Wakanda Forever soundtrack on Friday, October 20th. Uh, this is gonna be the first Rihanna vocals us Rihanna Navy have gotten in about seven years plus. <sighs> a very long wait, Rihanna Navy. A very long wait. My wife had us waiting forever. She done did pop the jit out. She done did dated billionaires, niggas who got locked up in Amsterdam, and just like all types of shit. You know, but now she finally making music again. And she better not trick me either. You better drop the album, too. Don't let this <laughs> single be the last shit, Rihanna. I ain't playing with you. Well, we know it is, uh, last, like I said last week, it, it will be two singles from the Wakanda Forever soundtrack. Um, one of them will be premiering this week. Um, I And and I, I'm i assuming that she, I, I could be assuming wrong, that she has an album coming out. Um, she will be touring this year. She does she's have a Super Bowl. Bowl. Yeah, so um, I think Rihanna's back on, and we'll see how it does for the next year. Um, unfortunately, I'll just have to watch her on Super Bowl day because I will not be getting any tickets for her show because the priority will be Beyonce and Janet. In other news, Ashanti recently sat down with Angie Martinez, and she addressed a lot of the stuff that we'd been hearing from Irv Gotti, um, who had a lot to say about her for no reason. Um, so she did talk about some of the things that she went through in her relationship with Irv Gotti in both the professional and the personal um, aspects. Um have you heard that uh, interview yet? I'm not going to hold you. I only saw that shit today. Maybe like two hours before we even hopped on today. Mm. I've seen that for the first time. I ain't going to hold you. I live under a rock. I don't even know who the fuck Irv Gotti is. I seen her tweet something about Gotti. And I thought you she was talking about Yo Gotti. I'm like, wait, wait, hold on. Her and Yo Gotti beefing? Because, you know, I know who Yo Gotti is. You know, them, them street rappers. So, I I know that. But, like, then there's is some, some light-skinned nigga, or maybe he white. I don't know. Some white nigga named Irv Gotti. I was like, huh? What the fuck going on here? And then I seen she had that interview, but I did not click that shit. I was like, I don't even know who Irv Gotti is, so I don't even care. So, I just kept scrolling. <laughs> So Irv Gotti is a big time producer. Um, he was also a Shanti's producer. And at one point they did have an affair when she was younger, um, potentially underage, when he was still married. Um, he has since made multiple statements that were very, in my opinion, 
sexualized and disgusting um, against her um, flaunting their, basically him flaunting their affair. Um, he seems to be upset because she was in a very long standing relationship with Nellie. Um, he seems to have some animosity towards them on that. Wait, Ashanti and Nelly is a thing? Ashanti and Nelly was a thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, they, I don't think they're still a thing unless they got back together. I don't know. That's crazy. I never knew that. I really live under a rock, a boulder, if you will. Shit. <laughs> yeah, so... Oh, they they did reunite for an, a performance, but I don't think they are still. No, they're they're not still together. Um, unless they reunited, that we don't know, and it's behind the scenes. But yes, Ashanti and Nelly were together for a while, um, and then they went their separate. So, it I I. It you know basically her statements are that he used to basically down her, tell her he made her, he did everything to make her and Nelly's relationship hell, and so we know that there was a tour, there was like a reunion tour, there was like a reunion album, there was like a whole documentary, and she has not participated in any of those because she doesn't want to do, deal with Earth. So weird ass nigga. Yeah. I don't know why he brought all this heat to himself. Like she was minding her own damn business too. Yeah, pretty much. Um, so if you haven't watched the full I haven't watched the full um interview, interview either. But definitely go go watch that. Um so we can hear Ashanti's side. We've been hearing for the last couple of years, herbs mouth running all this time. So um on other news, Maxwell has issued the Maxwell Challenge. So I don't know if you saw last week, Maxwell did, I was on stage and he was With like. With his knees? Yes. Oh my fucking gosh, bro. He was, he, had, he, was, he was doing the Meg the Stallion knees. Oh, and yeah. He was doing Meg knees on the stage. It was, he, he the did the chicken leg too, bro. He was opening his leg and shit. I was like, boy, what you doing on this stage right now? Like, ain't no way you got, you got no songs that call for this. <laughs> like, what, we're going to sing half crazy and just be on our knees like this? And my mind going half crazy. Like, girl, bro, stop playing with me, Maxwell. <laughs> Maxwell said, he don't know what you're talking about. He absolutely has me, 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 <laughs> that calls for this. And in fact, he is calling on all fans to do the Maxwell oh, Challenge. Challenge. Nah, these zoes must be stopped, but he won. <laughs> <laughs> he won it for real. Uh, but you know, Haitian niggas always got good knees. If you want to practice, you know, hit me up. 954. Psych now, psych now. I got no number for y'all. <laughs> My knees is bad. <laughs> well, you talk. <laughs> so that. But the Maxwell it. challenge, you know, go ahead, y'all. Get out of try. Go hashtag it. Cause you know these old heads need some money. Go get her. Go ahead and get us some clout again. <laughs> well, I I think I forgot to mention last week. I was supposed to. I didn't put it on our our sheet. But um, rest in peace to Haitian music. Star. Mika Ben. Yes. Rest in peace, Mika Ben. He prayed right before he got on stage to perform his final concert play. He said he ain't going to stop till it kill him. And shit, unfortunately, it happened. But he did it doing what he loved, you know. Right. And, you know, I want us us black folk to really have like a healthier diet for real. I ain't telling niggas to go vegan because I sure will never go vegan, but I love chicken and fucking like like Haitian food. Too much to ever go vegan, but eat healthier, y'all. Like we be eat we be skipping breakfast, 
We be not getting none of these vitamins that we really need in our day to day life. Niggas don't be really eating fruits and shit, veggies here, here and there. But like, y'all, come on. We got to take care of ourselves. And I seen on the news today, actually, Mm -hmm. while I was um, taking my granny to a doctor's appointment, I seen on the news today that there is, like, colonoscopies may not be effective in catching cancer anymore. Um, And it's just... Colonoscopy and colon cancer is something that's very prevalent in the black community as well. Snatching lives right up there with diabetes. Um, yeah. And a lot of that shit goes like undisclosed. And a lot of that shit, you know, niggas fight in silence. You know, for example, Chadwick Boseman on the yeah. Black Panther, rest in peace to my brother. Um, and he passed from colon cancer as well. And it's because he was a little late on the jump to getting the screening to that colon cancer. And, you know, the treatment could have been done way earlier. And that's just how the cookie crumble for a lot of us. Even my own father has had, like, colon cancer before as well. He's all clear from it now and shit. But, you know, that's just a really run through, like, Negro veins. I don't know what it is, but we really do need to like do better, eat better, and like try to reach for a life that you know niggas don't want to see us have healthy and happy. Yeah. So pro pro tip. Um. So you're supposed to get a colonoscopy um screening. Uh, for colon cancer when you're like 45 like uh, so I'm not even there yet um, but if you have history in your family you should get it in your 30s so like I, I would say that for you Sir Gleeful knowing that your father's history um, you definitely want to get that screening early um, for prevention um, same thing for women um, have breast cancer in your family, you want to get early screenings, but make sure you get your mammograms when you're supposed to at 40. Make sure you go get your booby screened if you are... You need it earlier too, and it's so unfortunate, but insurances do not cover it before that fucking age. That should kill me, dog. Like, especially if you have like history in your family, whether it be for mammograms or colonoscopies and colon cancer, yeah. the insurances yeah. don't give fucks if you're not that age range yet. And yeah. you just That's reminded me I gotta get that shit done in my 30s, girl. I ain't gonna hold you. I'm very scared. I do not want nobody playing in my booty. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> It's better than the alternative. Yeah, it's better than the alternative, which is not waking up another day. I I agree a hundred percent. But yeah, damn, bro, thinking about somebody got to play my ass, bro, that should do not bring me comfort. I cannot sleep at night. Well, but- I mean, I think, I think you're asleep for it, so yeah. Um, but yeah, so um, make sure you. And if you are not uh age forty and do not have those um early indicators you know based on family history or whatever make sure you are checking yourself there are websites that show you how to check yourself check yourself in the shower um and if you feel anything even if it's like just something slight make sure you go and get it checked by a doctor please i implore you so that is our psa's yes 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 go ahead and play with your titties if you feel a lump go ahead and get that shit checked asap Okay, on to the last uh, music news um, item. Apple raises its monthly subscription prices for Apple Music, Apple One, and Apple TV Plus. You want to know what my yes? You want to know what my biggest qualm or like problem with Apple is? First. We got to pay fucking $1,200, not we, because I ain't included. I don't want you to know right now. But y'all paying $1,200 for these motherfucking phones. And that shit don't 
come with Apple Music. You got to pay separately for Apple Music when you already paying $1,200 for an Apple phone? That shit blows me. And I like some head. That shit just blow my mind. Like, I'm shocked. And it's like, yo, why don't that shit come with it? We got to pay to listen to music on a phone that we already spending mad bread on and pay for monthly. That don't make sense. At least have like a little Spotify thing where you can throw some ads on that bitch and have the option to pay premium to not have the ads. But no, for an Apple product, we have to pay for another Apple product that should be automatically coming with our phone, which is a music player. That's all that it is. I understand you got to pay your fucking producers and music people. But, yo, Apple, you already get mad fucking bread. Like, yo, throw the fucking ads on. I don't give a fuck. I'll pay that premium for the ads if I'm tired of the ads. But at least give me the option to buy fucking premium or ads or all that whatever. Whoop -de -whoop, you feel me? That shit just be blowing me. That's my biggest pet peeve of Apple. TikTok over. Yeah, so I have an Android, so and I don't have Apple Music on my iPod, so not me. And I don't like Apple uh, TV is one of the services I do not subscribe to. Uh, but sorry for all those who are hurting. Wait, so how much it raised to now? Because Spotify don't raise their shit too as well. Because Spotify used to be when I first used to subscribe to Spotify. It used to be like nineteen dollars. Now that shit like eleven, twelve. Um, so I don't have Spotify either. Um, I have YouTube. Girl, you don't listen to no damn music? What the hell? Mm -hmm. I listen to it on YouTube. Um, music. Yeah, I hope you got YouTube bread. How you doing with them ads? You can't even lock your phone and listen to music. What you talking about? Yes, you can. That's what you, why you get premium. Hmm. Interesting. So YouTube would be the only music app that you pay for? Or that you'd be willing to pay for? I used to pay for... <laughs> I used to pay for... Um, Frig. What's um Jay-Z's one? Oh, shit. Jay-Z did have one, huh? And I, I, I had to stop paying for that one, so... Title. Title. I used to pay for Title. Title was good. I liked Title. Was but... Title good? I never had Title. I just I don't know. I I don't know. So I never really called me to like ever use Title because I was like, yeah. Bro, I got Spotify. What the fuck I need to ever use Title for? Yeah. So for me with YouTube Music, like I also get YouTube Premium with my um, so like it helps with my business stuff. So it just. It made more sense for me to do that. Um, the individual plan went up a dollar. The family plan went up two dollars, and the annual plan went up ten dollars. Apple TV Plus, the monthly plan went up two dollars. The annual plan went up twenty dollars, and Apple One, the individual plan went up two dollars. The family plan went up three dollars. And the premium plan went up $3. Wait, so how much was the music one again? OG music app? How much did that go? Uh, the music one, the individual plan is ten ninety nine a month now, which is a dollar increase for individual. Mm -hmm. And then um, family is sixteen ninety nine a month, uh, $2 increase. And the annual plan for individuals it's a hundred and nine dollars, which is a ten dollar increase. Oh, very unfortunate. I hate that for us. Yeah. Well, back to Spotify I go. <laughs> um, yeah, so good luck to all those who just got snuckered out of money. Anything else in the music section? Um, no, because I already talked about my favorite album that I've been listening to as of right now, which is still the Isley Brothers album. Now, when I do want a little bit of rap shit 
NBA Youngboy did just drop an album as well. I know a lot of um, hate goes to NBA Youngboy, and he got a cult following as well. It's really freaky. But um, the album is called Ma, Kama, I Got a Family Now. And just that album name, bro, it brings warmness to my heart as well. Because I want to be like, yo, Ma, I got a family now. Like, yo, I ain't the kid that you once knew no more. And yeah, so that's that's been my fucking album that I've been listening to when I'm off of that R and B beat. I've been listening to a lot of of my I got a family now. Cool. Um, remember last week I was saying to you that I thought I heard like a Cuff It remix. Apparently, what I heard was the Cuff It clean mix. So the radio edit because. Um, the mm. actual version is pretty explicit so now there is I, I see now why she wouldn't put that out as a single but it looks like she realized that she had to give the people what they wanted and they wanted to cuff it as a single um and so she changed the f words and all the other explicit stuff into different words and I, I still enjoy both versions i like them both and so now even on tiktok you can either tiktok to the clean version or you can tiktok to the original um which helps professional people who want to do tiktoks to cuff it use the clean version now so that is awesome that's dope yep so on to food news I have exciting news. Remember a couple weeks ago, I talked about the Snickerdoodle Oreo. Well, I got one. Oh, let's see it. You got the Snickerdoodle Oreos. Go ahead and give us a motherfucking live review right now. So it's um a golden Oreo cookie. That cream is thick, by the way. The cream is a very thick... um. And it has like little sprinkles in it, I guess for um, holiday. That's the it's right called, boys, yeah. <laughs> It's called Crunchy Sugar Crystals. The cream is cinnamon flavored. And I think it's a just a golden Oreo cookie. Um, so I did try them yesterday. Listen to that ASMR, I, y'all. That crunch, crunch, crunch. I will say for me, not enough cinnamon for it to be a snickerdoodle Oreo. And I think it's because of the sugar crystals. It makes it too sweet. So what they should have done is just done like a cr- sugar cookie sugar crystal cookie and then like a cinnamon cream my opinion but it's still good i it's still edible i would eat it I and mean, you is eating it <laughs> she said i would eat it girl finish that cookie i don't know would you eat the whole thing though that's the real question mm. or would you pass it off to somebody else to finish that whole thing Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the that's what it is. Or maybe it's the latter. Cause I ain't gonna hold you. I had two yesterday. I had two yesterday, and I was like, I can't have any more. Normally, Oreos, mm-hmm. I can keep going. Yeah, I ain't never had a Snickerdoodle before, but um, them Snickers do be doodling, and that shit sound like it's sweet as fuck. And I'm not one for the super duper sweets, cause yeah. As I grew older, so did my motherfucking taste buds. And them shits be like, yo, you are not fucking 14 no more. You cannot have all this sweet shit. And I'd be paying for it. I don't even really like it no more. I used to be like, like no problem. But this is super sweet to me. So, but hey, go try for yourself. It's not terrible. I've had definitely had worse Oreos. Um, Absolutely try it. Yeah, they have a peppermint Oreo. That's just disgusting. I don't know why anyone would eat that shit. My like, son likes my son likes mint Oreos. He likes the the fudge covered ones too. Ugh, uh, no. No. Poor soul. He is very lost. I'm sorry to say that about your child, but he is a lost child. 
<laughs> he also likes mint chip ice cream. So he just, uh, no, I, know. I can't do the toothpaste. So the toothpaste. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly how I feel about my fucking mint chocolate chip ice cream. My little sister do that shit too. She loves mint chocolate chip ice cream. And I'll be like, yo, girl, like, what's good with you? You like eating this motherfucking toothpaste? Like, what's like, what it is? Yeah. Um, in other news, Aldi's is releasing a hot sauce advent calendar this year. So if you don't know Aldi's, it is, I believe it's a grocery store. It's a grocery store. It's actually foreign, I think. Aldi's. Produce, maybe. <sighs> I don't know. They just a more cost of German. It's it's a German grocery store um, that has been brought over to the United States, um, kind of like you know how the they brought IKEA over, um, and they do have like I went into one the other day. They it it's kind of like a cross between a Whole Foods or a Trader Joe's and a cross between like a Sea Town. <laughs> and um so they have really good deals on certain things they have like some things that are very expensive but every year they do different calendars, um which if you don't know what the advent calendar is it's like a little calendar box thing and inside is like a little goodie they have chocolate ones i i saw a cotton candy advent calendar which i've been trying to get i need to get one for myself um, I love cotton candy. Um, Aldi's in particular has a wine one. They um, have a cheese one, which I'm going to try to get. Um, and this year they're doing a hot sauce one. You like hot sauce, Glee? I love hot sauce, but I don't know. I don't know how, about, know? how I feel about that, though. <laughs> Well, it would be like little mini bottles, so um, it's not big, um, and you know it'd probably be good for like one or two meals, and then you know you toss the the, the hot sauce. So if you're big into hot sauce, it might be cool. Um, yeah, you know, I like hot sauce. Okay, I don't like vinegar sauce because some of these hot sauces be tasting like motherfucking vinegar and cayenne pepper, and that should. Be fair right. point. Fair point. Let me see if they have any of. Uh, Flavor that they because you know what type of hot sauce I be eating on the regular on my wings and like rice and whatever the fuck I be eating. When I'm feeling like I want to eat something normal, I mm -hmm. eat, I use habanero. When okay. I want something spicy, I use ghost pepper. Ooh, wow, ghost yeah. pepper. Yeah, and I eat ghost pepper normal. I don't even be going, ha, ha, ha. No, I just, you know, that shit just like some fucking Buffalo Wild Wings to me. It's ghost pepper. Wow. Um, so this is filled with Bay Island hot sauce calendar. Advent calendar. And it is 24 individual 0.84 ounce bottles of hot sauce that cover a range of heat from gentle to ghost pepper. Uh, okay. So it did go up, up to ghost pepper. I could have yeah. me some little mini bottles of ghost pepper. Yeah. So they um, it includes four different chil chipotle pepper sauces, including an intriguing chocolate chipotle version, three habanero sauces, two jalapeno peppers, and one sriracha. I like sriracha for the flavor. It don't really be hot. I mean, unless you use, like, a lot, a lot, then it'd be little. Yeah. I, I also like sriracha. Um, I like jalapeno. I like good flavor. Yeah. So, um, yeah, the, that, listen, if you're near all these, go check that out. They have other ones, including... Um, Have you seen the Hot Ones interviews before, Mika? The no. ones with the chicken wings? Yes. Yes, I have seen them. Okay. How far do you think you will reach on that meter? Not very far. 
Damn, I feel like I could reach I, almost all of them except for yeah. Pain One Thousand. I don't know if you watched them, but there's one that be coming back every a few seasons called mm -hmm. Pain One Thousand or Pain One Hundred Percent. One one of them shits. I tried that bitch before. That bitch actually hot. <laughs> Yeah, that bitch hot. Never for hot. That bitch is hot. <laughs> and I like, yo, they call that shit pain for a reason. Because that shit just hot. It's not even flavor. It is just hot. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I like hot, but I don't like hot like that. Like, I'm not into spice like that. Um, so, I, I know I wouldn't make it far. Um, but, you know, I like heat. But just not all heat. <laughs> Um, uh, so other in other news, McDonald's is bringing back the McRib for its holiday season, its yearly debut. Um, but apparently, it's for the very last time. Do we believe them? They said that a few years ago, and then they brought it back in the last two years. Um, so who knows? But I mean, the way they've been saying motherfucking McDonald's is made out of little kids, maybe it might be the last time. Mm, maybe. For real this time. They've been cracking down on human trafficking, so fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> this is all my conspiracy theorists out there. I had a conversation with a few conspiracy theorists, and they sat me down for motherfucking like two hours talking about how McDonald's human trafficking kids and that's what we're actually eating. They're a little crazy. But hey. Believe it. Um, I just make my own McRib at home. So you can have your own for yeah exactly too. You can make you can get ribs anywhere better than fucking McDonald's at that. I've never had a McRib because that's just never appealed to me. But hey, those of you who fuck with it. Yeah. Go for it, but but me, Absolutely. I will look at you funny. <laughs> Absolutely, have at it. Uh, I might pick a. I, I do like a big grip, so you know, maybe if I if it's near one of my locations, I'll grab one. I, I don't go to McDonald's that often though. Um, Shake Shack is gonna host an exact exclusive three course dinner. With one of the best chefs. Would you go to a Shake Shack three course dinner? Shake Shack three course dinner? Yes. Let me tell you something. I have a hate relationship with Shake Shack. Not love hate, but just hate. So I've only ever had Shake Shack two times. Each time, I've had a bad experience. The first time, these motherfuckers gave me such a thin-ass motherfucking burger patty. I ate bread, lettuce, and it felt like ground beef, damn it. That's how <laughs> thin that shit was as a burger. That shit pissed me the fuck off. I like just all the hype about, about Shake Shack. What the fuck is this hype? Because Cash App kept fucking giving me a damn fucking promo for Shake Shack. Like, get 10% off your first Shake Shack meal. I was like, man, fuck. I keep getting this damn, like, promo for Shake Shack on my Cash App app. I might as well just try it one time for the one time. That shit was booty butt cheeks. Thin-ass fucking burger. Then That smash burger was too smashed, in my opinion. Second time, yeah. there was... Wait, Smash Burger or Shake Shack? Oh, a Smash Burger is a style of burger that you cook. Okay. I, because, I like, when I normally get Shake Shack, their burger isn't too smashed. So, that mm. might have just been the cook you got. It, it might have been, but it was still a bad first impression, so fuck them. Um, the second first impression, was, I tried them again two years later. And I had a long ass fucking hair that I was pulling out of my throat. Just one long hair intact. It's pulling out of my mouth and I felt it like coming out of my throat as I was pulling out of my mouth because I was chewing. I was like, I feel like this stringy shit. 
And I was like, I pulled it out of my mouth, and I kept pulling. I was like, oh, hell no. I should have threw up on that fucking table in front of everybody. But I didn't. I had some fucking decorum. And I went up there and said, I'm not paying for this shit. Put this shit down on the table in front of them. I didn't even care for no fucking refund, no receipt. I walked out that shit. Now, my sister was in there, and she finished talking to them and got me the damn refund. But I was so over it, bro. I just walked to the fucking car, bro. Like, what the fuck is this, bro? What the fuck y'all just fed me? Y'all just fed me white woman hair, bro. Like, I was fucking done. So, never again. Shake Shack is off my list. I am sorry to hear that. Um, you know how you always tell me that 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 sounds like the Chick Fil A near me. That sounds like the Shake Shack near you because uh, I. Don't know. <laughs> 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 I love no, you. I tried two different Shake Shacks. Don't give me that. <laughs> Uh, so I'm sorry. Um, come to come to New York, and we'll I'll get you the right no, Shake Shack. The original. Two different Shake Shacks, two different cities, bro. Yeah, like it was no. too much. Maybe I gotta leave the state. Yeah, I was gonna say. I think you need to leave the state. Um, <laughs> and lastly, uh, Pop Tart is collaborating with. Tahin, and they announced a limited edition called Crazy Bueno. So, would you want a Tahin flavored Pop Tart? I don't even know what a Tahin is. T- oh, I'm surprised you said you like spice. So, it's like a Mexican, like little spice. It's like a chili lime kind of seasoning. Mm. I probably have had it. I just never knew the name because I lived in Mm -hmm. Arizona for a few years. So I've had a lot of their cuisine. Yeah, probably had it. Probably on some like fruit or mango. Yeah, they love eating that shit with fruit. Um, They love it with watermelon, mango, Mm -hmm. for sure. I never seasoned my watermelon till I Mm -hmm. met Mexican. Yeah. I have no idea niggas season their water. I was looking at them crazy. They're like, yo, season your watermelon? I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> Girl, you season your watermelon? <laughs> that shit had me weak. But no. <laughs> yeah. So, may, I don't know. A Pop-Tart style tahini? Yes. Mm, that's like mixing sweet and spicy, and I don't know how I feel about that. Like, I don't think my sweet food should ever be spicy. But then again, my only sweet tooth that I ever really have is for chocolate. Oh, really? Yeah, I, love uh, I have sweet tooth for everything. Oh, um, well, I mean, and also, tahini can also be like just sour, so it like it could it it, it could be just like a sweet and sour type of pop tart. Never know. So, I don't know if I would have it. Um, I what do I use tahini for? I mostly use it to line the rims of my margarita. So, hmm, I know. I <laughs> but I also use Old Bay to line the rims of my spicy <laughs> margarita. So, Old Bay, nah, you wildin'. Um, it, it gives it that little kick if you like spicy. Mm-mm, old Bay just salty to me. Oh, really? Yeah. And it makes me crave seafood. <laughs> well, yeah. It does. Every, time I, every time I taste some Old Bay, <laughs> like this, Old Bay got such a distinct taste to it, too. It's like I could taste that shit in some whatever, bro, like mashed potatoes or whatever. I, I don't even know. But I taste Old Bay, bro, and then I started craving this damn shrimp or crab. <laughs> so um my birthday trip i went to a um distillery and there they make a jalapeno vodka and i don't even like vodka but this shit was so good and then they mix it in a drink it make a spicy drink and um they line the rim with old bay and it was amazing and so I've been doing it ever since. 
Interesting. I don't know. I'm not going to knock it till I try it. So, but I'm not going to try it myself. I'm not ever going to fucking line my own rim of a cup with Old Bay. I'm going to fuck it up somehow. But I'm going to let somebody else do that and take the blame if it's bad. It's definitely better than salt, in my opinion. I don't like salt. Right, salt, salt be giving my, like, it be raising my fucking blood pressure. I don't know what it is. But yeah. It be fucking me up. I'd rather sugar. I'd rather sugar, tahine, or um, obey. So, yes, 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 yes. Okay, so that's it for my food news segment. Let's wrap up. Yeah, wrapping up. Um, you know, I think we had a good, successful little time here. I appreciate everybody who tuned in to listen. Thank you for sticking around for the two little half hour video maybe it might be cut down a little bit because of our lovely host here thank you host maybe maybe not um you know and appreciate y'all for listening to me ramble i was a little schmidt just a little but you know we we lit we here we gonna have mika schmidt episode 10 so you know y'all support us and we get to episode 10 you're gonna see mika schmidt too uh yeah somebody got to steer the ship so i don't know <laughs> we'll see how that goes might have to get a moderator in here right, uh, we only need a babysitter <laughs> run the uh, show while we run the show <laughs> yes thank you everybody for listening again to our podcast and i just think we keep getting better and better um, as always, follow me on Entertainment and Color on all social media platforms. Make sure you like and subscribe. And me, I'm just a nigga with a voice. If you want to hear this voice again and catch me, go ahead and follow Entertainment and Color. And maybe I'll be featured in another little tidbit that she got if y'all request it. And maybe if I'm in the mood, I'll join. <laughs> well, you, you can definitely start doing some recaps if we start watching some shows. <laughs> so, um, that, that that seems to be the the issue here. But yeah, so if you guys let us know what you know what you want to hear, what you want to see on our pod, and follow us on podcast. Make sure you share our podcast out to your friends and family. Come on, like get us to the masses. The, the mm-hmm. topic is great, people. If you like listening to us in the whip while you on your way to work or you know doing whatever, you know share that. Share it with everybody else. And, you know, let's get some dialogue going if y'all got some good topics that you would like to hear two different opinions on that you just don't have really anyone else to ask. Um, ask us. We Absolutely. got very much so different opinions because she like one thing, I like another. So, you know, fuck with us. Thank you for the tuning in. My name is Sir Glee. I'm a retired liar. Actually, I'm retiring. I I'm coming back out of retirement because I did I did lie on Mika. You know what I'm saying? So I'm retiring. A retiring liar. And uh, yeah, I'm also a part time hoochie in the summertime. You feel me? I gotta show my legs off. <laughs> Which we will never see because he's not showing us. But. And I am your passionate eclectic. I, as always, I'm all over the place. But hey, you know, give us some ideas. Ground us. Ground me. I'm. Uh, thanks, you guys. Hope to see you next time. Good night and wherever you are. Later. Peace.